Hello, this is Ms. Schrader. Today we're going to be talking about some of the artworks of James McNeil Whistler. My students, you'll need a piece of paper and something to write with. You're going to be taking notes and when you're done, you're going to be giving me between seven and ten sentences on the art of James McNeil Whistler. What we're looking at right now is a self-portrait. Um, Whistler was born in 1834 in Lowell, Massachusetts, and he died in 1903 in London, England. This particular painting was done in 1872. Um, it's currently at the Detroit Art, Art Institute. Um, Whistler was sort of late impressionist, um, famous for having come up with the phrase art for art's sake. So art should be done simply because it's art and it should be done. Whistler is considered one of the founders of tonalism, which is an artistic style that started in the 1880s with American artists and they're focusing on landscapes with overall tone of color, atmosphere, or mist. mist. And so they're focusing on things like the colors that they're using and um, focusing on that sort of thing. So he often did a lot of work in which he simply said, oh, this is this, and he mentions the color. The piece you're looking at is called Nocturne in Black and Gold. And it looks to be something with perhaps some sort of a burning building. You'll notice there isn't a whole lot of color being used. There's varying shades of orange, some purples and blues, but mostly there's a lot of black. And that's a lot of the things that they're doing with tonalism. Though Whistler was an American, he spent the bulk of his career in Europe um, involving himself with the rich and the famous of Europe. This is one of his earliest famous paintings. It's called Symphony in White Number no. 1, The White Girl, done in 1862. It's his girlfriend and business manager, Joanna Hiffernan, um, created very simple. You'll notice that she's standing on um, an animal, a wild animal carpet of some sort. So there's a lot of color at her feet. Um, but other than that, um, the drapery behind her has a lot of texture to it. You can see um, the draping of her dress. There's a lot of draping going on with what she's wearing and things like that. But for the most part, it's a very simple picture. He was a man who loved to do pieces of beautiful women. This is Whistler's most famous painting. Its official name is Arrangement in Gray and Black, number one. It's also referred to as Portrait of the Artist's Mother. Its most famous name is Whistler's Mother. And as you can see, it is a painting of Whistler's Mother. It was done in 1871. Um, it is in the realism movement. Um, his mother's name, by the way, was Anna McNeil Whistler. Um, today, it is shown in the Musée d'Orsay in Paris. Um, at the time that he did it, people didn't like it. She wasn't shown as being very attractive. She didn't seem very pretty, and they didn't like the fact that it was obviously arranged. And he eventually, because he always struggled financially, had to sell the painting um, to the Musée de Luxembourg in Paris simply to get enough money to survive. And he was really frustrated because, once again, he's going with the idea of art for art's sake. And he didn't see why people had a problem up with it. He said, um, take, a, take the picture of my mother exhibited in the Royal Academy as an arrangement in gray and black. Now, that is what it is. To me, it's interesting as a picture of my mother. But what can or ought the public to care about the identity of the portrait? So to him, the main thing is he's doing a study in black and gray you know, dealing on the contrasting colors. And he doesn't think people should care about who the person is in the picture. This, by the way, is Arrangement in Gray and Black number two. 
Uh, this is his friend, Thomas Carlyle, posed basically in a similar manner. It doesn't look as though he's in the same location, um, but it was done in 1872 and 1873. So presumably he's studying, you know, putting all these people in the same position and focusing on using gray and black as the main colors. But Whistler's mother became iconic. Um, she's used in various different ways. This is a statue made based on the painting. It's called the Mother's Memorial. It's in Ashland, Pennsylvania. Um, as I was going through, they were mentioning films that mention Whistler's mother. Sing and Like It, The Donald Duck Shorts, Early to Bed, The Fortune Cookie. Um, it's even mentioned apparently in The Simpsons. And Whistler's mother is included in a list of iconic pieces um, including Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa as some of the most significant and memorable paintings in history. Whistler is also famous for having created the Peacock Room, an entire room painted for someone. Uh, it was done between 1860, 1876 and 1877 in the Anglo-Japanese style. And it was done for a man named Frederick Leyland. And he basically told Whistler, um, do whatever it is you want to do with this room. And what Whistler said was, well, you know, I just painted on, I went on without design or sketch, putting in any touch with such freedom. And the harmony in blue and gold developing, you know, I forgot everything in my joy of it. So he finished up the painting. Um, today it is in the Freer gallery of art in Washington, D.C. I've actually gotten to see this. You can walk into this entire room that is done based on this concept. Whistler appears to have had a lot of girlfriends and had children with a lot of his girlfriends, and he painted a lot of his girlfriends, but he actually was only married once. This is his wife. Her name is Beatrice. She's described as Beatrice Trixie. That's a strange name. Um, she's painted here in Harmony in Red. And they weren't married a really long time before she died of cancer. And not long after her death, he also passed away. So we've been looking at some of the famous artwork of James McNeil Whistler, most specifically this painting, um, Whistler's Mother. My students, you are giving me between seven and 10 sentences about what you found interesting, educational, and important about the paintings of James Whistler.